The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. He tender me. Oh 
everybody believe. It means it's a manner of act. Grace is undeserved mercy. You don't deserve it, but I give it to you. 
grace is what we call unmerited favor. Without merit, God gave it to you. He canceled a debt that you owe. For the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, it's a gift, is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And the scripture we read today in Romans tells us that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But yet the Bible says, but being freely justified, being freely justified. The word justified means to be acquitted. In other words, it's like you going before a judicial branch. You're going before a judge. And you know you did. And you know you're guilty. But he decides to acquit you, to let you go. That's what God did for us. We were guilty. And he let us go. He paid the price. He canceled a debt. So um, the wonderful thing about God's grace is that it's marvelous. It's marvelous. It's marvelous. And, 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 and you're not hardly going to find him because uh, most of us were not looking for God. But he was so gracious that he was looking for us. Uh, God will find you. He will yeah. find you. I'm a witness. He'll find you. Yeah. I'm so glad my, my mother raised me in the church. My mother never asked us, did we want to go to church? She said, she just came to the door and said, it's time to get up. We knew the rest of the story. Amen. That means get up, take a bath, and, and put your clothes on and get in the car. We knew. We knew. And, and, and it's just what God says in his word about if we train up a child that the way that it goes, when they're old, they won't depart. Those children will come back. But it's your job to keep bringing them, keep them in the house of the Lord. God's grace will find them someday. I promise you that on the authority of God's word, God will find them. He'll find them. Because God's grace is almost um, scandalous where he'll go to get you. Hallelujah. I remember some years ago, uh, my, my, my brother was in the crack house. But God went on up in there and got it. Hallelujah. I saw him some months ago living in Atlanta. Got a nice pad. Working for the VA. Oh, God. God is so good. Good to folks that don't even deserve it. One day Jesus was walking and he met a woman at the well. Hallelujah. That's how good God is. And, and, and she was a Samaritan. The Jews didn't have no dealing with the Samaritans. But God's grace drove him to find this woman. Oh, hallelujah. And Jesus went there and he ministered to this woman. Ministered to her. And we, we find that this woman... She was going out to draw some water, but she didn't go at the time early in the morning when most women went out to draw water. She waited till the heat of the day when nobody would be drawing water to go because she could not handle the, 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 the words and the attitudes of other women who did not like her, did not respect her. So she went out to get some water and, and that's where God's grace will find you at. When you can't handle it. When other people are talking about you and treating you indifferent. And, and, and she uh, was out there and Jesus said, um, well, could you get me some water? And she said, well, you, you don't have nothing to draw with, you know. But, but, but to make a long story short, um, as they conversated, um, it came to the point that Jesus finally told her, you, you've had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your own. Before she left, she said, as she left running, she said, come see a man that has told me everything. Man, what happens when the grace of God gets into a person's life? 
Amen. They, they, they just want to spread it. They want to talk about it. Somebody said, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. And then soon all those around can warm up to it glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Oh, he won this woman. He won this woman. When we reach John chapter 8, we find a woman who was actually, the Bible says, taken in the very act of adultery. Now, I have never uh, found a woman by herself taken in the act of adultery. Amen. But it looked like, hey amen, I don't know what she was doing. I'm not going to even go there. But usually when adultery happens, there's a woman and man. Amen. Hallelujah. Something is wrong with this picture. But it doesn't matter what man think about you or whether man is responsible or not for his own we find the grace of God showed up and freed this woman. They said, Jesus, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. First question I would have asked is, where the man? But you know what Jesus did? He stooped down and began to write on the ground. Then as he lifted up his eyes, he said, he that is without sin cast the first stone. When he looked back up, all the men were gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. They just they want to have a rock party for her now. They want to stone her. But then when he asked about sin, they all they all were gone. They all were gone. Grace will find you. God's grace is promiscuous. It'll find you. Rather, you've had five husbands. It'll find you. Uh, even if you've been caught in the very act, it'll find you if you would allow God's grace to find you. Uh, one great boxer used to say, you can run, but you show sure can't hide. Because God's grace is irresistible. How can you resist someone trying to be good to you? Someone trying to save you? Someone trying to keep you from the very pits of hell? How can you resist someone that loves you? Loved you, care about you. Hey, Think about a uh, young lady um, by the name of Lady Cheryl Jordan who lives in Lakeland, Florida. She said she was out on the dance floor. And while she was out there dancing, boy, she said she felt something coming over. And, and, and she told her friend, I got to get out of here. She said the same boy said to her, get in touch with Kathy Ross. And boy, the rest was history. Amen. Amen. She got baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Now she's married to an evangelist. Got a, whole, uh, a son who's a um, who's a um, pharmacist, and her life just took off. Somebody need to get in touch with Kathy Ross. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I did. Um, it took me a while, but <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. Took me a while, but I got in touch with it too. Grace, grace, marvelous grace, grace that exceeds all of our sin. That's what we need. That's what we should be trying to show to other people. Grace, grace, grace. That's what we're supposed to be showing to other people. Never will forget a woman came to the church in Lakeland where the Honorable Apostle Henry Ross was pastoring. She walked in the church. She didn't know what was happening. She said, the Lord told me to come here and get the Holy Ghost. So where is it? Uh. <laughs> oh, oh, she got it. God filled over with the Holy Ghost. And she got baptized in Jesus' name. Grace, grace. Grace can do more if you allow God to do what he wants to do in your heart and in your life. Yes. And then if you learn how to have grace upon grace when you talk to other people and when you minister to other people. Yes. Some people don't have no grace. Right. Amen. No grace. <laughs> no grace. No grace. No grace. God's grace, it is powerful. And God's grace is sufficient for everybody. God's grace is sufficient for everybody. You see, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all made mistakes. Amen. 
if you are Bible readers, you know that Jacob was a cheater. Peter would have had a temper. And every now and then he would curse. Amen. Uh, David, amen, committed adultery. Jonah uh, got drunk. Uh, Jonah ran from God. Amen. Was disobedient to God. Paul was a murderer. Moses was a murderer. Gideon was insecure and doubted God. Miriam was a gossiper. Amen. Talked against Moses' wife. Amen. Uh, Martha was a, a worrier. Thomas was a doubter. Sarah was impatient. Elijah uh, was almost suicidal. Moses stuttered and murdered too. Zacchaeus was short. Amen. And probably a thief too. Abraham, Abraham lied. But hear the word of God today. Hear the word of God today. That if God should regard iniquity, who could stand? That's what the Bible says in Psalm 130, verse 3. In spite of all of this, it is a grace of God that brings salvation. The Bible says it has appeared unto all men. It's God's grace. I want you to Thank learn you, how Lord. to accept his grace, receive his grace. Yes. I want you to know that only the blood can make us whole. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. Yes. The blood of Jesus. You see, the Bible tells us in Leviticus 17 and 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Blood, blood, blood. And the Bible says this here in Hebrews 9, 22. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. Someone had to die. And someone said, must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free. There's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. Listen here. Blood is so important. When, when John saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. He knew who Jesus was, who taketh away the sin of man. And that's, what Je that's why Jesus came, to take away the sin of man. Your sins and my sin. That's why Jesus came, to take away the sin of man. But he did it by shedding his own blood. Blood is a powerful thing. Years ago when my father was in the hospital, they took his blood to try to find out what was wrong with him. And after analyzing that blood, the doctor came back and said these words said, to my mother, Miss Forehand, your husband, don't have long to live. My father looked at the doctor and said, man, who in the world you think you is? You, you don't tell nobody how long I'm going to live. You ain't God. Well, he might have not been God, but he, he, I, he must have knew medicine. If he didn't, even if he wasn't God, he must have knew medicine because my father died very shortly after that. Blood, blood is so important. You have red blood cells. You have white blood cells. Your red blood cells oxygenate your lungs so you can breathe. Your red blood cells push it out all of the impurities that's in your body through your pores, through your bowels, um, through the, the, your tear ducts. Your red blood cells push it out everything that's, un, that's not pure in you. Hallelujah. What can wash away my sins? Yo, 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 white blood cells. If something foreign gets under your skin, your white blood cells will surround that area and keep it from, from that, that infection going any further. Some of you might have sin in your life, but thank God for the blood. It'll rush to that area. It'll surround that area. So whatever it is you're going through, it won't be long. Hallelujah. And then after that, your white blood cells surround the area, sometimes you can push that area and, 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 and something white comes out. Y'all call it pus. Amen. I, that look kind of funny now. Hallelujah. But thank God for the blood. Your blood is so powerful that when, when, when they want to find who the daddy is, uh, y'all ain't helping me now. <laughs> Why didn't you get the man blood? <laughs> Whose blood helps to put that baby, bring that baby in the world? Y'all didn't know that. That's why they get the man blood, by the way. 
Y'all didn't know that, right? Am I right? Okay. Don't do it like that. Amen. Listen, listen. Listen, listen. That's where they get the man's blood. And guess whose blood you got? Woo, you got the blood of Jesus. My God. He's your father. He's your father. Woo. Your blood is so powerful if you cut yourself. Your own blood will begin to coagulate and form a scab to keep you from bleeding to death. If your blood can do that, how much more shall the blood of Christ? Blood is power. It's important. It's powerful. Listen, I just want to read you a poem today in, in, in an effort to speak to you so that you will stop trying to look down on others and worry about others. Amen. About who's going to make it to heaven and who ain't going to make it to heaven. Here's a poem for you. It says, I was shocked. Confused, bewildered, as I entered heaven's door, not by the beauty of it all, nor the lights or its decor, but it was the folks in heaven who made me sputter and gasp. The thieves, the liars, the sinners, the alcoholic, and the trash. There stood the kid from my seventh grade who swiped my lunch money twice. <laughs> Next to him was the old neighbor who never said anything nice. Bob, who I was I always thought was rotten away, would rot away in hell, was sitting pretty on cloud nine, looking incredibly well. I nudged Jesus. What's the deal? I would love to hear your take. How do all these sinners get up here? God must have made a mistake. And why is everyone so quiet? So somber? Give me a clue. Hush, child, he said. They're all shocked. No one thought they'd be seeing you. <laughs> listen, listen. Grace. God's grace. I'm just glad that I have been accepted in the beloved. Anybody else has been accepted in the beloved? you got to learn to love everybody and don't worry about those who are unloving because unloving people the Bible says he that loveth not knoweth not God. They don't know God but you know God. So you have to keep on loving. Mm -hmm. and, and you see love is a powerful thing. Love covers a multitude of faults. Mm -hmm. Love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love keep no account of wrong. Love is not puffed up, it's born is not itself. And so God, who is love, is asking you to love people. And don't be judgmental of other people. Learn to accept people because we all make mistakes. And if and we ain't number one heaven, and then number one God, and God, he makes the final decision. Right. So learn to love folks. <clears throat> learn to be nice to folks. And let's win unto Jesus Christ. Would you stand in the presence of God?